Hello viewers, welcome to History Facts. In today's video we are discussing popes who didn't take celibacy very seriously. Enjoy the video. Despite the vow of celibacy that is a cornerstone of the Catholic priesthood, throughout history there were many popes that were not celibate. These romantically active popes included those who had long-term partners and even a few popes that had children. While this kind of moral and spiritual dishonesty is now considered to be a thing of the past, at the time, this blatant hypocrisy fed into popular anger over deceit within the Catholic Church, adding to the great turmoil surrounding the Church during volatile times. Here are some of the more egregious examples of popes who didn't adhere to celibacy. Pope Alexander VI fathered nine children. Rodrigo de Borja, a.k.a. Pope Alexander VI, brought misconduct within the Catholic Church to unprecedented levels. Connected to the Spanish branch of the powerful Borgia ecclesiastical dynasty, he was appointed a cardinal by his uncle and eventually became the vice-chancellor of the Catholic Church, acquiring tremendous wealth by selling offices and indulgences to the wealthy. He didn't even maintain the pretense of celibacy, ultimately acknowledging four children with his upper-class Roman mistress Venazza Cataniae. He had five other children from various other mistresses, children he claimed as nieces or nephews. His son Cesare, the model for Machiavelli's The Prince, would resign his cardinalate and marry a French noblewoman. Alexander's daughter Lucrezia would engage in various notorious affairs and three marriages. Historical speculation has abounded about her also engaging in intrafamilial relations. Paul II allegedly passed while sexually engaged with a male page. Paul II was a 15th century pope who was engaged in minor conflicts for his seven-year tenure. Celibacy may have been an issue, as the manner and circumstances of his passing are disputed. Official accounts have him succumbing to heart failure after eating an excessive amount of melon. Other accounts, possibly originating with papal enemies, assert that Paul II passed during the intimate act of a young male page entering him from the rear that he thoroughly enjoyed dressing up in elaborate vestments also contributed to rumors of effeminacy and homosexuality. Pope Julius II was covered with shameful ulcers. Born Giuliano della Rovere, Pope Julius II became Pope in 1503. Today he is most famous as the artistic patron of Michelangelo and other prominent Renaissance artists and for the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica. He also ignored celibacy as a cardinal, fathering at least one daughter with his long-term mistress whom he ultimately married off to the chamberlain of a cousin. Julius was tainted with another charge late in life that he consorted with men, even common pro-street workers. The 1511 Council of Pisa condemned him as such, even including that he was covered with shameful ulcers, an allusion to syphilis. History has not rendered a verdict on this assertion. Julius passed of fever in 1513. Julius III made his alleged commoner boyfriend a cardinal. Giovanni Siacci del Monte, eventually Julius III, was a pope who ruled for five years in the mid-16th century. Perhaps he is most famous today for creating what was described as one of the most notorious homosexual scandals in the history of the papacy. While still a cardinal, Julius became emotionally involved with Innocenzo, a teenaged, illegitimate son of a beggar woman. After Julius met him in the streets, he was installed in the household of the cardinal's brother, who adopted him and gave him the family name. 
One of Julius III's first acts as Pope was to appoint Innocenzo a cardinal. Although church historians have attempted to label this relationship as strictly platonic, at least one ambassador stated emphatically that Innocenzo shared the Pope's bedroom and bed. Innocenzo was so incompetent that the Pope had to create a special office for him with zero responsibility. Because of this appointment, Julius was mocked within Rome and throughout the various courts of Europe, with emissaries noting Innocenzo's coarse background and lack of sophistication. Upon Julius III's passing in 1555, his paramour's influence waned. He was eventually incarcerated by papal order after separate incidents involving murder and rape. Although he was still officially the cardinal when he passed in 1577, his memorial was private and unattended. He was buried in an unmarked grave in the Del Monte family chapel in Rome. Sixtus IV was embroiled in a sex and nepotism scandal involving his nephew. Sixtus IV was another late 15th century gay pope who flagrantly elevated young, attractive men to positions of authority within the Catholic Church. His favorite, his nephew Pietro Rierio, his sister's son, was made a cardinal in his 20s. Sixtus indulged his profligate relative who literally wore gold-laden clothes, kept his own mistress, had several hundred servants, and threw parties stocked with young boys and pro-street workers that lasted well into the night. Although Rierio reportedly ran up huge debts at the Pope's expense, he passed within three years of his position. Sixtus is also said to have given a special dispensation to the College of Cardinals to practice sodomy during the summer months. Although the Sistine Chapel was subsidized by him, Sixtus is remembered historically for deceit, nepotism, and heavy taxation. Classical historian Jacob Burkhard referred to him as the Terrible Sixtus. Pope Benedict IX was the demon from hell in the disguise of a priest. By all accounts, Benedict IX was not only a really bad pope, he was a really bad person. A contemporary called him a demon from hell in the disguise of a priest. Even the Catholic Encyclopedia, which is frequently accused of sanitizing papal history, refers to him as a disgrace to the chair of St. Peter. One of the youngest popes ever elected, in 1032, he immediately began spending the papal treasury in bordellos and on debauchery, hosting group sexual engagements that included men and animals. His behavior was shocking even by Roman standards. His first papacy ended when angry Romans rebelled and expelled him briefly in 1036. He would exploit politics and be reinstalled, only to be removed again in 1044. Benedict assembled an army and retook the papacy a third time in 1047. Wisely, considering his unpopularity, he decided to sell the papacy and get married. Typically, he soon changed his mind, throwing the political situation into chaos. He would eventually be forcibly expelled and excommunicated, after which he renounced his ways and later passed in a monastery in 1056. He is the only pope with three separate terms in the office and the only pope to openly auction off the position. Pope John XII turned the papal palace into a brothel. Documented papal sexual misbehavior goes as far back as the 10th century with John XII. Named Pope at the age of 18 on December 16, 955, John XII got the appointment through his father, a Roman prince who ruled the city for 20 years. John XII was most likely illegitimate, and because he was both the religious and secular leader of Rome, he ignored celibacy. 
He allegedly engaged in intrafamilial relations and is reputed to have turned the papal palace into a brothel. His passing was rumored to be at the hands of a jealous husband occurred who caught the Pope engaging in adultery with his wife. Leo X, the first Medici Pope, was also actively gay. Julius II's successor was Leo X, the first Medici Pope, the son of Lorenzo Medici, called I.L. Magnifico. His father cautioned him against the licentious atmosphere in Rome, you ought to be grateful to God, and continually to recollect that it is not through your merits, your prudence, or your solicitude that this event has taken place, but through his favor, which you can only repay by a pious, chaste, and exemplary life. Maintaining such a virtuous lifestyle would, though, be difficult in Rome, that sink of all iniquity. Giovanni would probably meet with those who will particularly endeavor to corrupt and incite you to vice. Unfortunately, Leo X continued the money-raising practice of selling both indulgences and offices. He is also mentioned in two contemporary histories as having had routine involvement with male lovers, and he is listed as such in a modern who's who of gay history. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe, and comment.